Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch and we're bringing you the major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Thousands of workers observe general strike against inequality in South Korea. Ethiopian government launches airstrikes on Mekele as TPLF continues advances. UN experts warn overcompliance with US sanctions are harming Iranians' right to health. And indigenous peoples file case against Ecuadorian government to halt oil production. In our first story, tens of thousands of workers across South Korea observed a general strike against inequality on October 20th. The action was organized by the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions or KCTU. Workers across sectors such as care work, education and construction came together to raise 15 demands. These include the abolition of non-regular or contractual work and the expansion of labor protection. Over 40% of all workers in South Korea are considered irregular workers. The strike also demanded just industrial transition with full participation of workers. Workers are also demanding the socialization of housing, public and medical care and education. They have also demanded the nationalization of key industries including automobiles and shipbuilding. According to the KCTU, 80,000 workers participated in Wednesday's strike. The work stoppage was accompanied by mass rallies across the country's 14 regions. The KCTU stated that around 27,000 people took part in the demonstration in Seoul. South Korea is witnessing a housing crisis and worsening inequalities. The KCTU is mobilizing workers in urban centers and rural farmlands. Meanwhile, the union has faced increasing intimidation. Over 20 organizers, including KCTU head Yang Kyung Su, were arrested last month. In our next story, the Ethiopian Air Force carried out airstrikes on the Tigrayan capital of Mekele on October 18th and 20th. Wednesday's strike reportedly targeted a factory used by the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front to repair weapons. Meanwhile, the target of Monday's airstrike was a communication network facility run by the group. The TPLF began Ethiopia's civil war in November 2020 after attacking a federal military base. It has killed hundreds of people and displaced over 700,000 in the state of Amhara and Afar. A UN official has cited local health workers saying that nine people were injured in the strike that hit Mekele. Three children were killed in another strike in the outskirts of the town. While the airstrikes made international headlines, the TPLF's continued advances and attacks had largely been ignored. The federal government is also facing international pressure to declare a ceasefire. It had already declared a unilateral ceasefire in June, which was not honoured by the TPLF. As per reports, the group has marched further to Amhara state's largest city of Desi. People displaced by the TPLF's violence in other areas are taking refuge in the city. Massacres have been reported in at least nine towns within the Amhara state. Eyewitnesses have stated the TPLF fighters went door-to-door -door killing civilians. Desi was being guarded by the Ethiopian Army's Central Command. However, the Foreign Ministry has stated that 30 civilians have been killed by TPLF artillery and shelling. The group has also restarted attacks in the Afar state and civilian deaths have been reported. The fighting has disrupted supply routes for aid to the rest of Ethiopia, including to Tigray. Millions of people across Ethiopia have also been pushed into severe hunger. UN experts have said that overcompliance with US sanctions is harming the Iranian people's right to health. They argue that banks and businesses have refused to finance exempted trade with sanctioned countries. These include medical and pharmaceutical companies. The experts have highlighted the decision by Swedish bandage maker Mjolnika to stop shipments to Iran. The bandages offer the most effective treatment for those affected by epidermolis bullosa or EB. The life-threatening genetic skin disease affects around 1,000 Iranians. While the US reimposed sanctions on Iran in 2018, Mjolnika stopped all its shipments. These included authorized humanitarian trade, which the US claims is exempt. The Iranian Center for International Criminal Law has stated that around 30 Iranian EB patients have died since then. A UN expert has argued that denial of access to pain Pain relief, that is, violates the right to be free from inhuman treatment if the result is severe pain and suffering. The US has imposed around 1,600 sanctions on Iran. Overcompliance by third parties in fear of penalties has made conditions worse. And finally, indigenous peoples have filed a lawsuit against the Ecuadorian government to stop the expansion of oil development. Right wing President Guillermo Lasso has issued decrees to expand oil blocks in the Amazon rainforest region. He is also trying to boost foreign investment in mining projects. Indigenous communities have called these actions a policy of death. Hundreds of people approached the Constitutional Court on October 18th to have the decrees nullified. A Warani leader argued that if oil companies were allowed to enter the territory, it would impact 22 communities. Lasso is seeking international investment to boost oil production to 1 million barrels per day by 2025. He wants to make mining one of Ecuador's largest sources of income. The lawsuit argues that decrees 95 and 151 violated the indigenous people's right to free, prior and informed consent. The Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, or CONAI, 
also helped protests against Lasso in September. Among the issues raised was the rise in fuel prices decreed by the former Moreno administration. While a meeting was held between Lasso and Konai this month, no agreements were reached. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.